Welcome back to the Stingy Trigger Tabletop. Trigger here today to do a review of a great little shotgun, the Winchester Model 37, sometimes referred to as an M37 shotgun. As always here in the Stingy Trigger Project, I like to start off with a little bit of history when I can. And as this is a classic firearm, there's actually a little bit of history to go along with it. The Model 37 was first introduced in 1936, with the first units shipping in February of that year. It was produced until 1963 when it was retired by uh, the Winchester Repeating Arms Company, and it was replaced with the Model 37A a couple of years later that was made well into the late 80s before Winchester went out of business and sold off its manufacturing division to just be a label to other companies out there on the market. They made a lot of these guns. They made over a million of them, of just the Model 37s. It doesn't account for the Model 37As. And unfortunately, we only have company records to go by because these particular guns were not serialized by Winchester. So you, the best you can do is to break them down by uh, specific uh, date ranges as opposed to uh, finding an actual date of production for a specific gun that you might happen to have in your possession. They made a lot of different calibers for these guys. They made them in 12 gauge, 16 gauge, 20 gauge, 28 gauge, and 410 gauge using 2 and 3 quarter, 2 and 7 eighth, and 3 inch shells. Overall, a lot of variation and a lot of options are out there for these particular shotguns. They also made a slightly smaller boys model, which was usually chambered in 410 gauge or 20 gauge, and it was designed to teach younger children how to learn to shoot a shotgun and enjoy uh, their shooting sports. Overall, the history is pretty cut and dry. Uh, there are a couple of things you can look for to try and figure out what type of shotgun you have. Although they are all identical in manufacture, you can check the markings here. It has uh, the Winchester, the gauge, the choke size, the chamber size, etc. And the model number, model 37. Now there are a few things you can look for. Right here, there were what were called the red letter guns, which were made prior to 1948, where these stamped in letters, I don't know if you can see them there very well, uh, were actually filled in with red paint uh, in order to make them stand out. Now, unfortunately, this is not one of those. Also, one of the other things that you can look for is a couple of folded sheet metal components that were only used in 1936. And as this is all forged components inside and out, this is clearly not a gun of that vintage either. Now this particular gun was my father's gun, so I can pin down the date a little bit better than that. He bought it in the late 1950s, and it had been previously owned by a family friend. So, best case scenario, it's somewhere made between about 1948 and I would guess about 1958 at the latest. And realistically, since they owned it for a couple years first, probably more like about 1955. And that's usually about as good as you're going to get for dating these particular models of guns out on the market. Now, on to design. It's a standard single shot shotgun. It's a top brake style, one chamber, automatic shell ejector. It's got an external hammer, single release lever, single trigger. It is as basic as a shotgun can be. It's really, though, uh, a high quality shotgun, especially if you can find some of the older Model 37s like this one, as opposed to the 37As. It is all blued steel all forged components, all hand rubbed walnut furniture. These guns were made back in the day before MIMMED, before uh, a lot of the uh, polymers came onto the market. These are old school single shot shotgun firearms that are really classic pieces of Americana. 
When it comes, to, of course, to cartridge capacity, well, it's a single shot shotgun with one chamber. So your cartridge capacity is limited to one. So you're not exactly going to want to be using this for something like, say, home defense or in a tactical scenario. This is the kind of shotgun you use if you're a sportsman, perhaps if you're shooting clays, uh, duck hunting perhaps, turkey hunting even. Field stripping and maintenance of this particular shotgun. Field strip is easy. Done. Now yes, you can break it down a lot more than simply opening it up and brushing out the chamber and brushing out your barrel and making sure that everything is nice and lubed in here and clean with a little bit of solvent and hit with a little bit of rim oil. But it's actually pretty involved. You have to remove the foregrip here. You then have to drive out some pins in order to remove the barrel and the front section from the rear section. You then have to do things like removing the trigger unit, uh, removing the stock from the back, driving out a couple of more pins in order to completely break this down and really get at the action down inside. So field stripping and maintenance though, that's easy as pie. Open, clean, closed. As basic as they come. Now when it comes to ergonomics, this gun feels great. I can honestly say that it's one of the few guns I've held, and maybe it's just because of the age of the gun or the craftsmanship that went into it, but it feels like the gun was made just for me. It is a little bit on the heavier side. It does weigh in about six pounds, which is not bad for a shotgun, but seeing as it's only a single shot shotgun is kind of a disadvantage. So it is a little bit heavy, again, all old school blued steel, all hardwood furniture, all that kind of weight adds up. Uh, however, when it comes to track record, out of the park. It is reliable, it is durable, and it is a guaranteed shooter. This gun in particular, as of May 2012, is, as I said, well over 50 years old, still shoots great, has never had a single part replaced in it, is all top quality materials, and when it comes to being reliable, if you pull the trigger and you get, instead of bang, all you have to do with the external hammer, unlike your pump shotguns, is cock it back again and fire again to see if you can get your shell to ignite. And usually that's been a problem of poor quality shells as opposed to light primer strikes. Regardless though, it is a great shotgun that is super durable and super reliable. That brings us to value. These shotguns are a great value. The average cost you're going to find for one in pretty good shape is going to be about $125 to $150. You might find one that's got some rust or some pitting problems on the barrel, maybe the furniture's a little beat up, closer to $100. And for one that's as cherry as this, with little to no nicks in any of the wood, no cracks anywhere, and is still all original bluing, you might pay closer to $175 to $200, but that's going to be about the limit for an original Model 37. And of course, depending on gauges, 20 and 12s tend to run a little bit cheaper, 410s, 28s tend to run a little bit more expensive. The boys' models are a little bit even more than that. But all in all, it's an affordable gun that is a classic, classic design and is a great little shooter. Now, as far as accessories go, you name it if it's a shotgun, you can pretty much use it for an accessory. Ammo bandoliers, ammo pouches, buttstock pouches. There aren't any slings for this per, uh, per se, and there's no sling mounts, so if you really wanted to sling it up, you'd have to add some sling attachments, which I personally wouldn't recommend, especially seeing as you can very easily just carry it in the break open position, either over your wrist or over your shoulder. There are a couple of companies that do make some replacement sights for it, uh, there are no rear sight mounting options, so if you do want to add a rear sight, it is you are going to have to tap and drill at some point down here in order to add it. 
There is a single front bead sight here on the barrel, and I have seen a couple of companies that make some ring sights that clamp on here and at least give you a, a taller front sight blade, if not an actual sight picture. But basically, if it can be used for that particular gauge of accessory, you can pretty much be guaranteed to use them on this gun. Which brings me to intended use. As I said before, I wouldn't necessarily use this shotgun as a home defense gun. I would, however, use it as a sporting gun. Uh, if you'll allow me to slip into my British persona for a moment. <coughs> yes, well, you see, the sportsman must only ever have one shot. If you cannot drop your kill with but a single shot well placed, be it a shotgun or a pistol or a rifle, then you do not deserve to bring in your kill and trophy. So, for those of you that are sportsmen, who want a little more challenge, who maybe don't want to be able to rack six rounds through a pump shotgun, a single shot like this might not be a bad example. It's also a good training gun, especially for younger folks, and it's also a great heirloom gun. Uh, as I said, this was my father's shotgun when he was a boy, and it was my shotgun when I was younger, and still is my shotgun today, and someday, if I have children of my own, it will belong to one of them. Uh, so this is a great example of an heirloom gun, something that is high quality, that's not going to wear out, that is something that you can pass down from generation to generation. Which brings us to fun factor and enjoyment. It's a lot of fun to shoot, it's a lot of fun to practice reloading drills, putting in new shells, it's a lot of fun to shoot clays with, it's a lot of fun to shoot targets with. You can shoot both uh, slugs and shot of varying sizes out of these shotguns. They are made uh, with good, high-quality, well-tempered steel and in the era of smokeless powder, so you don't have to worry about any of that kind of worries of black powder-only shotguns. I will say, though, that you probably don't want to put steel shot through it uh, just to keep the condition of the barrel very nice. Uh, lead shot, though, knock yourselves out. There is one criticism I can level, though, at this shotgun, especially when it comes to being a training gun, and that is it kicks. Even in 20 gauge, this thing kicks, which is why I've added a limb saver, recoil reducing slip-on butt pad. You could, if you wanted, put one of these standard grind-down bolt-ons on the back in place of the standard butt plate. Uh, I, however, prefer the slip-on variety so that it can be readjusted or I can remove it should I want to easily without needing a screwdriver. Uh, and this cuts roughly the amount of recoil in half and really makes it a pleasure to shoot. Otherwise, you are going to wind up with some bruises. So all in all, especially for the dollar that you're being asked, this is a great shotgun to consider. It's high quality, the kind that they don't make anymore, even in the US without a lot of custom gun work. It's affordable, it's affordable to shoot, it's affordable to own, and if you get one in nice enough condition and shape, it's the kind of gun that you can pass on to your, ch uh, your children and your children's children and will be something that you're going to be able to hand down through multiple generations. So all in all, I give the Winchester Model 37 a huge thumbs up. Uh, as far as shotguns go, single shots especially, I would give it a 10 out of 10. It does everything right and almost nothing wrong. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more fun gun and project videos. And remember, we're just a couple of city slickers working this out as we go along. Thanks for watching. <laughs>